Hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. It's good to be in church. So um, we'll be continuing our teaching series we started this month about the parables of Jesus. And today or tonight, I want to reveal to us God's heart, God's very own heart concerning something that he's really, really, really dear to his heart. And not just for us to know, but for us to be able to pattern our lives and our hearts according to his. Amen. When God called Abraham, the title of the, this message is Lost But Loved. Lost But Loved. So when God called Abraham and gave him the promise, he said, lift up your eyes and look, look around you. He said, as far as your eyes can see, right? That is how your children, your descendants would fill the earth. True or false? But many of us, especially Christians, as we start our journey, we only and only and only think that this promise is limited to Isaac. But it's not limited to Isaac. Ishmael shares a very, very big portion, even in the blessings that God pronounced over Abraham. Isaac has had 12 children, right? Isaac, okay, Isaac, then you have Jacob. Jacob had 12 children. How many of you know that Ishmael had 12 children? In Genesis chapter 25, you can find it there. Genesis 25, 12 to 18. Each Ishmael had 12 sons. Their names were Nebaioth, Kedar, Abdil, Mibsam, Mishma, Duma, Masa, Hadad, Tema, Jetor, Naphish, and Kedima. These sons, the sons of, of, of Ishmael, became the heads of the 12 Arabian tribes. The 12 Arabian tribes, just like we have the 12 tribes of Israel, we have 12 tribes, 12 Arabian tribes from Ishmael. And sometimes the way most of us treat people of the different faith is alarming. It's alarming. The descendants of Ishmael, they played a significant role in biblical history and they were part of God's plan. They were known for their prowess as skilled archers and they were nomadic people living in the wilderness of Paran. Talking about the descendants of Ishmael. If we open our Bibles to Matthew chapter 11, verse 28 to 30, before I read, I know that people's, if certain people see Hagar, or they tell you this is Ishmael today, many of us would shift. Just like Sarah said, cast the bond woman out. But guess what? God brought the bored woman and her son back to the house of Abraham. True or false? God brought them back. Sarah, like us today, would cast them out. Take this, your, your, the bond woman and her son. Cast her out. Abraham, 
carried them, gave them small water, gave them food, and told them to go. And they got to a point where their resources were depleted, Hagar and her son Ishmael. And because of fear that Ishmael would die, she put Ishmael away far from where, you know, just, just away from her, so she would not see when the child is dying because she did not even have water to give to Ishmael. And God from heaven spoke to the same bondwoman that they kicked out. God from heaven spoke to her. He said, I have what? Heard the cry of your son, of Ishmael. The baby's cry has gotten to me, to heaven. Directed her and said, there's water there. Go and take water and give to the child. After that, God instructed her, go back to your madam. Go back to that house. And this is what you do. Apologize. Submit yourself back to her and should accept you. The question is, is if God did not care or if the, if the promise or the covenant was Abraham did not get to Ishmael do you think that God would have sent Ishmael back to the house? Of course not. So Matthew chapter 11 verse 28 to 30 it says are you tired? I'm reading from the message version. Are you tired? Worn out? Burn out on religion? Come to me. Get away with me. You recover your life. I will show you how to take a real rest. Walk with me and work with me. He said, watch how I do it. Learn the unforced reading of grace. He said, I won't lay anything heavy or ill-fitting on you. Keep company with me and you would learn to live freely and lightly. Today we'll be considering two aspects of two parables of Jesus to just buttress what we have started with. Remember I said the topic is love, lost but loved. Tell your neighbor, lost but loved. So we we'll read from Luke chapter 15 verse 1 to 10. That covers both parables I'll be sharing on. Let's open our Bibles. Media, please help me project. Luke chapter 15 verse 1 and I read. Please stay with me. Now, okay. Then all the tax collectors and sinners drew near to him, to hear him speaking about Jesus. And the Pharisees and scribes complained, saying, This man receives sinners and eats with them. Go on. So he spoke this parable to them, saying, What man of you, having a hundred sheep, if he loses one of them, does not leave the ninety-nine in the wilderness, and go after the one which is lost until he finds it and when he has found it he lays it on his shoulders rejoicing and when he comes home he calls together his friends and neighbors saying to them rejoice with me for i have found my ship which was lost i say to you that likewise there will be more joy in heaven over one sinner who repents than over 99 just persons who need no repentance. Or what woman, having 10 silver coins, please pay attention, if she loses one coin, does not light a lamp, sweep the house, search carefully until she finds it, and when she has found it, she calls her friends and neighbors together, saying, Rejoice with me, for I have found the peace which I lost. And the last verse, verse 10, it says, Likewise, I say unto you, 
there is joy in the presence of the angels of god over one sinner who repents may the lord bless the reading of his word in jesus name now let's begin to draw the lessons from the lost sheep and the lost coin the owner of the lost sheep in that setting is a shepherd right is a shepherd that would have sheep in many cases and when the sheep goes astray the shepherd being a good shepherd would go after that one and bring the sheep back so the owner is a shepherd the woman may likely be a merchant because how would you get money if you do not work so there's a possibility a very high possibility that she's a merchant amen the next lesson to learn is the item the shepherd lost was a sheep and the item the woman lost was a what a coin a silver coin a what silver coin stay with me the total quantity of sheep the bible recorded the shepherd had the total quantity was how many 100 and how many coins did the silver coins did the woman have did the bible recorded 10 10 silver coins right which was what we read one is 100 the other one is what 10 the quantity of coin and sheep they lost was how many one one right if you value the loss of the sheep of the shepherd and the woman who lost the value of loss to the shepherd is just one percent one of one hundred is just one percent but the value of loss for the woman is how many ten percent who lost more the woman lost more right good search method the woman the 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 shepherd will leave 99 and go after one right and the woman will leave nine and go after one are we together now let's think about the possible because i was thinking what is the possible loss nature what would have cost it that the sheep that the shepherd lost the the sheep and the woman lost the coin i was thinking about it for the shepherd i believe i believe please mark my words i believe that it was a possible error of omission 100 sheep you expect that everybody is together you, you, sheep that you have been taking care over and over and over and over again there will be time ah let me just rest and he stood if he did not count he would not find out that one was missing so there is a i'm sure his body would have been telling ha ah, there is i'm not sure let me count and he started counting one two three four and found that 99 where is that one where is that one he noticed because i believe if he was there probably at the gate of the pen he would not allow one sneak out true or false so there was a possible error of omission maybe just maybe he went for a biological break or something he just removed his eyes small and that one sheep made his or her way out the woman uncle what do you think would have left would have cost her what do you think the error would have been the lost nature is a possible error of commission when you commit something you have 10 silver coins you put it here right once you put it here in a particular place you may just assume that everything is where it's supposed to be but guess what coin can it roll or not coin it can roll off 
so she may have just dropped it and maybe not pay attention when she was dropping it one would have just bam and rolled off she came back to find out that ah, wait to one two three four five wait there were ten but one is missing the bible did not say that there was somebody else in the house with her true or false the bible was silent so let's assume she was the only one so she knew nobody would have taken it if not the bible would have recorded that she asked her son or she asked her husband or she asked somebody or she asked somebody that did you see mm -mm. so for the lost nature for the sheep one lesson that we can learn are we together is that not everyone is doing well sometimes you may have a lot of people in the church but what not everyone is doing well nobody everybody balance people can dress good look good but not everybody is well so it would be wrong for us to assume right that everyone in the church is what well or okay they may show up every time they may not miss either sunday or midweek service but that doesn't mean that they are doing okay what should you learn from that because the there, are, there were 100 sheep one left that one that left something would have been scratching his body or something would have because normally sheep usually stay together if you beat one one is moving all of them will move towards that one but one that has been there all along decides to turn away and move something they do um, right he may just be either playful or whatever or maybe just got carried away by something but for the woman it's possible to misplace or overlook or lose things due to being busy one of the things that we are guilty of is familiarity you may know somebody who is not a believer maybe a muslim whatever or doesn't believe in god now your party for a very long time and we have never spoken god's salvation to the person because like ah, ah Shebi she sees me going to church now Shebi she sees me going to church Shebi she hears me and all that but we have never for once opened our mouth to tell the person that this is god's love never so we may be like that woman that has 10 coins and one just lose away because there's familiarity now uh -uh. she is here another thing i want to point out is this should have even come earlier what was jesus's association with the so-called people that were not believers the bible says they came to listen to who jesus's teaching jesus did not go and listen to their own teaching he ate with them okay but jesus never compromised so what should be your relationship with people who are not of the same faith with you should you give them space when you eat with somebody it shows some close proximity with the person the bible says jesus ate with them but they came to listen to his teachings some of you may be so close that they would now be the one trying to win you over imagine if you send why don't they send maybe like three year old to go and fetch water from the well why it's risky right you send somebody to go and fetch water from the well in a bit to fetch the water the person now falls inside if if an adult falls inside a well in fetching water let's say the person is 
taking phone doing a different thing and all that and suddenly he forgot himself now sits on the well and is laughing now wants to rest his back and the next thing they send them go fetch water both him and the buckets they are inside the well so your association with unbelievers should not be the one that at the end of the day will be sending people to come and remove you from that well that they are in another challenge i want to bring to your attention is do you make sinners comfortable or uncomfortable are they comfortable around you or they are uncomfortable around you you want to spread the message of love to them but the way you are even looking at them there's this disdain like you create a barrier between you and them you make them oh that is your side that is this is my side oh don't let we don't want to have anything to do with each other you create a barrier and these are the same people that you want to win over one other lesson to learn from those two accounts is that it requires what urgency say urgency the moment the shepherd noticed one sheep was lost what did he do left the 99 and went after the other one the moment he noticed he left the 99 and what went after the other one likewise the woman was urgent from what i read from the bible the bible says that when she could not find that one coin she lit a lamp and took broom to what sweep if somebody does someone light a lamp during daytime no right there's no need to light a lamp during daytime i reckon that she noticed that the corn was was missing at night when it was dark which was why she was had to light a lamp so why did she not wait for daybreak she would have waited like shebina my one coin and no wala nobody took it from there let me just chill when they break i go find them guess what she was in the dark oh. but when she suddenly felt and we're using her hand to count one two three four five and she noticed there were nine suddenly she needed light but she was comfortable to stay in the dark by herself but the moment she noticed one silver coin was lost guess what she had to light a lamp and she was doing work that night now let's talk about perspective from those two accounts did the bible say a black sheep left or did the bible says a naughty sheep left or did the bible says one over sabi sheep left didn't likewise for the coin right they did say the coin that has rust was the one that fell mm -mm. So for the sheep, God's word was a sheep left. One coin was lost. What should that tell you? Many of us we label people. This one no be better person. This one not this. This one not that. God's own children that we label. Over sabi good for him. She be this one waka waka. She be waka waka don't get belle. Good for him. But the Bible did not say black sheep, naughty sheep, rust, um, rusted coin. It just said a sheep left and a coin was missing. What is your perspective towards unbelievers? Do you judge them? Because the moment you judge them, you say, 
the moment you judge them and label it's almost difficult for you to go after that one you say live an awaka waka but as far as god is concerned sheep now waiting sheep now sheep coin now waiting coin a soul is a soul before god now what about the location the sheep the bible re recorded that supposing a man in the wilderness or what we will call bush right a wilderness or that kind of bush is an uncultivated place you can use a wilderness to refer to as a confusing multitude so where the sheep was lost was bush many places okay and when the coin was lost was where in a room two items missing but two different places what does that tell you depending on where you are right there are so many people that are lost around you if the person that lost sheep went to room to look for the sheep will they see the sheep there answer or the woman decides to say you know what this is my coin that lost let me go into the wilderness to go and look for that coin say this coin now waka waka coin it may have jumped down jump up open the door roll outside and was kept rolling you would not see it there wherever your location is don't say there are many bad guys in my place if god places you there he has placed you there for a purpose if where you are there are not so many people god placed you there for a purpose and there are people who are lost what would i liking the nature of the sheep or the lost sheep and the lost coin too the nature i would liken the lost sheep as people who may have backsliding why did i say so they were all what sheep not black sheep not wanting sheep not any they were all what sheep and they were all in the fold that's what the bible says the hundred were together in the pen but one left that one person or that one sheep that would have left may be somebody who may have backslided at a point was once once upon a time was in the fold but another time the person backslided right and the sheep is a refers to a living thing right the sheep is a living thing but the coin is not a living th thing true or false a non-living thing i would liken that to somebody who has never even experienced god at all so two categories of people one somebody who has backslided and the other one is the person who has never even been in the faith so both someone who is backsliding and someone who has never known god they can both be lost true or false true or false good now we are coming down what is the strategy both the shepherd and the woman used to find their lost products pay attention to this a shepherd needs to think like a sheep to find the lost sheep he needs to what think like a sheep imagine if jesus never went to sit or eat with those tax collectors would he be able to reach them we are not saying be like them we are saying be with them to win them over and because the sheep is living 
right in john chapter 10 verse 22 the bible says my sheep hear my voice and they what they obey me they follow me when they hear my voice they will follow me there is a possibility oh let me not even rush okay so he needs to think like a sheep and he'll be making a call maybe when that sheep hears that stuff as he's moving he'll be whatever the unique call is that he used to use to call the sheep so they'll follow when he's going into the wilderness what would he be doing he'll be making a sound those people who may have backslidden you don't need to do a lot of jabajantis in quotes to win them over there are certain things you would say do not remember your first love there is a way somebody who has backslidden you don't need to start from the scratch again there are different things you need a different approach to win somebody who has backslidden so the person knew about god and had backslidden there's a different approach because what you'll be doing is where did you miss it okay so tell me what happened you now hear something like um i was praying to god to heal my mother of maybe cancer and she died i prayed i fasted i prayed i called upon god but she died god failed me and because of that that's why i left people have different reasons for backsliding the onus is now on you to tell the person to encourage the person that see whether in life or death though right our allegiance to god to god should be steadfast and the way unbelievers will see people who have died should not be the perspective to what to which we we'll see right people who have died god actually encouraged us if anybody who is a believer dies the person did not die the person only sleeps and you are supposed to rejoice because the person's life was correct before him instead of crying and wailing like the person is lost and gone forever we shouldn't cry like that like people that do not have understanding that strategy for the for the for the for the shepherd going to find the sheep because the sheep is a living thing and he will make sounds right as he's going into the wilderness he'll be making sound for the sheep to recognize his or her voice what about the woman remember a coin is not a living thing true or false so you can't make sound for coin to say coin where you day coin will now say i day yeah oh. coin can't talk so the strategy that you are going to use to win somebody who is an unbeliever is different from the strategy you use to win somebody who has backsliding the bible says first she takes a lamp lamp represents light you need insight you need some level of training you need to be told this is how to go about it they don't just throw people into mission field and just say oh yeah just go just go and and, and, and tell people no people go through training light means illumination means understanding you need to know how to win somebody who is an unbeliever over to christ so she takes the lamp to improve her visibility and the next thing she does she did not take wrapper she did not take spoon she did not take anything the bible says she took what a broom and she was sweeping imagine her sweeping from one edge to another sweeping 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 that was her strategy so for people who are unbelievers you need to go into details there you it is not don't don't say all those very very high high thing jesus loves you is a very good place to start start from under and engage you have to bend down you have to what bend down to sweep bend down you it means you must bring yourself to the person's level of understanding to win the person over what is the goal of the mission for both of them the shepherd wants to find his sheep and the woman wants to find her what silver coin 
Now the specifics. Let's look at the specifics for both of them. When the shepherd is going out to look for the lost sheep, there is a possibility that he may see other lost sheep or sheep, so to say, in the wilderness. Would he say, because I don't I didn't see my own, make I carry this other one? Now thief be that. So when he's going into the wilderness, you cannot bring somebody else's sheep into your fold. What did I say? You cannot bring somebody else's sheep into your fold when your own is missing. That's stealing. If you call or make a sound, they will not even listen to you because the Bible says a stranger's voice, they will what? They will run away from them. They will run away from them. So, what would I further add to this? Stay within the bush, in quotes, God has placed you in. Stay within what? The bush, the vicinity that God has placed you in. And there was a specific instruction. I don't know whether the person is here or online. When I was preparing, the Holy Spirit told me I should write this specific instruction. It may not be applicable to everybody, but to whom it may concern, I believe the person would know that this instruction was for you. The Holy Spirit said, don't convert the converted what did i say don't convert the converted it's not everybody you win over that you now start to develop relationship with don't do that don't do that you may be liking the sister ah good sheep I see, see, ah, ah, see this sheep. Sheep will make sense. Fluffy sheep. God, could this not be the answer to my prayer? You know that I've been looking for a sheep since. Not be your sheep, be that. Oh. So to whom it may concern, God says, don't convert the converted. let's go to the woman on specifics when you are sweeping a house in the process of sweeping many other things dirty would come out when you are sweeping true or false you are looking for a coin no? as you are sweeping like this you sweep dirt you may see one of your ear, ear ring that, that you lost a long time ago like ah ah I've not even, you know, many of us, we don't sweep under our bed often. <laughs> Go and sweep under your bed. You hear me? Go and sweep under your bed. By the time you are sweeping, you will see dirty, old pencil, crayon, old socks, bogwe, old bunny. But guess what? If she finds one of her earrings that she was looking for before, do you think she will stop sweeping? Why? That's not what she's looking for. But while she's sweeping, she 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 saw other things, right? As she's sweeping, you'll be seeing, hey, this is ah, I didn't know. I don't even forget. Ah, thank God. But guess what? She will continue what? Sweeping. 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 What does that say? If you are going after somebody. There may be distractions that may take your attention. You don't try now. You've tried. Just relax. Don't stop. You are talking to the person, talking to the person, talking to the person. It's like as you talk to the person, the person is increasing in waywardness. Don't stop. Sometimes you may need to go back and begin to pray that God would soften the person's heart. So you come back. When you speak the word, the person's heart will be receptive. But don't stop until you find that lost coin. Do not what? Don't stop. 
Next, success criteria. The success criteria for the person who has 100 or used to have 100 and the person who has 10 is how many? One. Imagine one over 100 and one over 10. God see both of them as a distinction. You have excelled. One over 100 and one over 10. As far as that one comes back, God has marked your script like this. Fiam. He that winneth his soul is what? One. One. And towards the lower part of that scripture we read in Luke chapter 15 verse 7, the Bible says, there is joy over what? One sinner who repents. Not 20, not 50, not 100. Some of you may do a very big crusade and only one small boy that is looking like rag, that is wearing rag, will come outside. And you will look like, ah. so all this money that we spent is for this, 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 this thing. And the one person is out, oh, and you'll be calling. Many people, if you are still there, come out, come out quickly. Maybe what God intended in his heart is for what? Just that one. Maybe 12 year old, 15 year old, but you don't know what God has in your heart for that particular child that has come forth. Many of us will measure our success criteria by 20, by 50, by 99. But what's God's own criteria for success? How many? One. So if at the end of the day, you are able to win one over, what would God do? Pass. And the last lesson to learn from this is the celebration. The Bible recorded for both of them that in the same way there is joy in the presence of God's angel over what? One sinner that repents. One. Just one. There's joy in heaven. There's celebration over what? One sinner that repents. Pastor Julius, I asked myself this question. What then would happen if one sinner dies? There'll be mourning. Imagine God's presence that we were told that there's joy singing every now and then. There's a possibility that over the past decade plus, every single day, there's mourning in heaven. Every single what? Every single day, there's mourning in heaven. Because there are many sinners around us that are dying every day. And we are too busy. We want to love God the way he loves. We want to enjoy his benefits. We are so self-centered. Imagine your children you want them to do something. You told the three of them, go and do a particular thing. The three of them came back. Only one did what you asked them to do. The three of them now ask you to give them money to buy something. Who would you be favorably disp disposed to? The one, right, that did what was expected. So the reason why many of us have not even are not even growing is because we are not doing those things that will make the father happy. Instead of us to do the things that will make heaven rejoice over one sinner who repents by your posts, by one on one talk, by phone call, by your conversation, by many things you have not done any of that. And they are coming to God, give me, give me this. Give me that. Bless me. Bless me. 
Come on now, come on. Tell your neighbor, stop making heaven mourn. Stop making heaven mourn. Because when a sinner dies, there's mourning in heaven. The opposite of what's happening when a sinner repents, come to the fold. Right? When a sinner dies without being you, when a sinner dies, there's mourning in heaven. But when a sinner is converted, there is what? There's joy in heaven. So if you want to make your father happy, if you want to make your father proud, you must do the things that he loves. Simple message. 1 John chapter 3 verse 18 the easy to read version says as I wrap up and we'll take questions after my children our love should not be only words and talk 1 John 3 18 my children our love should not be only words and talk no our love must be what's real the bible says some other version say love not in words so don't be saying i love you i love you i love you as a woman or as a man if somebody is only using mouths to say i love you i love you i love you i love you you know they shake body he doesn't spend quality time if you are the person that likes quality time he doesn't buy you gifts if you are the person that likes gifts he doesn't help you walk if you are the person that loves acts of service he doesn't tell you nice things if you are the person and he's, and he's saying ah but you know i love you but you know i love you but you know i love you now wash that's what the bible is saying he said no our love must be real we must show our love by the things we do I saw Jesus did something that many of us would not do by showing practical love. There was a leprous man in Luke chapter 5 that wanted Jesus to heal him. He said, if you are willing, if you are willing, help me. That's what the leprous man, a leprous person at the first place, do not even mix with other people. So it means that Jesus went close to the path or the place that was reserved for leprous people, for the leprous person to even talk to him. Jesus went close. Now listen to this. In Luke chapter 5 verse 13, after he has begged like Jesus if you are willing say do you want to be say ah Lord if you are willing like if if I'm willing the Bible says in Luke chapter 5 verse 13 it says then he put out his hands and touched him mind you people do not even want to have any direct connection or physical contact with people who are leprous Jesus would have as well spoken to say let the leprosy live and it would have been clean but no do you know what Jesus did Jesus went ahead to what touch him first that touch it means I identify with you it shows care before the action you must show love before the action the Bible says Jesus reached out and touched him. Jesus did not need to touch him to heal him. But Jesus, the Bible says Jesus reached out and touched him. And he said, I am willing. They asked him a question, if you are willing. Before Jesus said, I'm willing, he didn't say I'm willing first. He didn't just say, he would have said I'm willing and healed him. But he did much more than what he wanted to say. So Jesus did before he even said the Bible says he touched him and responded I am willing he said 
be healed and instantly the leprosy disappeared for many of us we want to heal in quotes we want to reach out to people but we do not want to touch them because they are what unclean but what did Jesus do touched him first you must connect with people at a particular level to bring them over you must touch them you must find something that would make them feel loved don't treat people anyhow don't treat Ishmael anyhow don't do that don't kick Hagar away don't do that the person that is kicking Hagar away God is bringing her back Bring, God brought Hagar back to the same house that, that she was kicked away at first that should tell you the heart that God has towards us and towards people and towards unbelievers people that are not living right as much as many of us that claim to live right Jesus touched them I pray that God would give us the grace to touch these people in our own way touch them with your resources touch them with 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 calls with concerns with gifts touch them with food touch them with money touch them meet them at the area of their need many times some people do not even need any of those things that you're asking for they just want to be friends they want people to see them as human beings not as treated as as some of you you just see anybody with hijab and all that and you treat them with disdain you don't even want to interact with them come on now come on what did the bible says about jesus he was touched i pray that god will help us in jesus name thank you for watching this video if you were blessed please follow us on our youtube channel at Fota Aja. like share comments and subscribe 